Hello, time for another video. This time around I'm basically doing a uh, response to a poll I put up for the folks who donate to my Patreon page. I asked them what they wanted me to do next, so uh, we put that poll up for them to vote on, and the results came in like this. So, put the question as, what should Adam's next video be about? Uh, uh, going from least to most popular, something else, leave a comment on the Patreon post. We got one vote for that. Sadly, did not leave a comment on the Patreon post, so don't know what they wanted that video to be. Uh, a Godzilla movie review, got two votes. Uh, why the Star Wars prequels are better than you think, got three votes. But the number one vote, highest rated, I should say, was four votes for what do I think episode seven will be about. All right, so right up front, let me be the first to say um, that I don't really expect to be right on all things, but you never know, I might surprise you. Um, after episode one, I was convinced that Darth Maul was a clone and that Attack of the Clones, or episode two in the Clone Wars, was going to be that the Sith had an army of Darth Maul clones. And Clearly, I was wrong about that. So, moving forward, uh, I'm going to take a wild shot guess at what's going to happen in Episode 7. So, um, warning, there may be spoilers in here. I will be spoiling um, some details from, obviously, the prequels, the original films, and the Clone Wars cartoon. I am only using this as a jumping off point for the information in the story. I am not, um, although I may have gotten some inspiration from some of the expanded universe, since they have killed the expanded universe, uh, with the exception of the movies and Clone Wars cartoon and the upcoming Rebels. Um, it makes it a little easier, I think, to narrow in on what we're going to see. So, you've been warned, spoilers possibly ahead. And at the very least, not that I expect to be right, but this could be funny to watch a couple of years from now once the movie's out and we actually know what it was about. Episode 7, The Ancient Fear, is the rumored working title of the film, uh, taking place exactly 30 years after Return of the Jedi. I expect that we will tune back in. The Republic will have been restored and sent it back in full effect, just without all the Sith influence this time, we hope. Um, a new Jedi Order having been built. Um, I do think that in the background, or as supporting characters, we will see uh, Ahsoka Tano, uh, Anakin Skywalker's Padawan from the Clone Wars, whom we saw leave the Order behind and walk off into the sunset. So she survived Order 66. Um, not only that, I'm sure she'll turn back up in Rebels, but... Uh, it would be an interesting dynamic to bring her character into the fold. I believe her race is long-lived, and it would make for an interesting um, character to have on board to be able to fill in for Luke, or have filled in for Luke, who his father was, what happened, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I also think Asaji Ventress will be back, and I don't think she's going to be a villain. I think she will have turned to the light. And we will see her post-redemption as a, another Jedi Master in the Order. So those are the real... My, I'm taking a wild stab in the dark, but I think, I'm hoping, really, more than anything, we're going to see that. And having looked at this long and hard, what were the prequels about? What were the original films about? What is the constant threat through all of those films? Not just the Death Star, but, you know, what is the... the mo you know, the background motivation and all of those? And it comes back to Darth Sidious. Um, immortality was a theme, especially heavy in Re Revenge of the Sith. And if you're paying attention, the Sith drew their power and their strength from those around them and those serving them, which is, I think, part of why he wanted to make sure that he turned Anakin. Um, and you see that. You see that with Palpatine's aides around him as time goes on. Um, in the first film, everyone looks normal. Second film, they look okay. In the third film, the aides that are consistent through all the films... Um, starting to look a little death warmed over, a little dark around the eyes, and a little paler than they were. And, um, I suspect the energy that was Darth Sidious is still out there, and will be resurrected. Um, I suspect the first film will will end with them thinking they have put out the last remains of some Sith threat, and only 
for the audience to realize is that Sidious still looms. His influence is still present. Um, don't think Luke's going to have a wife. Uh, I know everyone's very fond of the Mara Jade um, dynamic in Luke having children. There is that idea that, well, the Jedi ranks need to be repopulated, but I think one of the driving themes of the prequels um, made a very strong argument for why a Jedi shouldn't have a wife, shouldn't have that attachment. Um, doesn't mean they don't feel love. It doesn't mean they don't, you know, they don't have a one night stand, but they're not supposed to have a wife. They're not supposed to have that. And, there, and there's something from a philosophical, spiritual, you know, Zen Buddhist kind of way. There is, there is value in that thought process. Um, and having seen the prequels played out, I think that's one of the many reasons why the expanded universe got nuked into oblivion is because, um, we've learned a lot more about what George Lucas's vision for the universe was. And so I think that is going to dictate how they handle seven, eight, and nine. Um, Han and Leia kids, definitely. Um, Leia, not sure we'll see her as a Jedi. We'll see. Um, but I do think that where seven is going to leave us is going to very much leave the return of the energy of Sidious. And I think there may even be a chance that we see Luke fall to the dark side. Um, uh, before the trilogy is over, but redeemed. Um, I think one of the themes that we'll see starting to be resonated in Episode 7 is in, in the prequels. It was about what happens when the dark side of the Force has a sway. The original films were, you know, about the light side, taking it back. And um, I think the third film is going to be more about the synthesis of the two. Um, I'll wrap this up by saying that a long time ago, you know, when I was a kid and Star Wars first came out, A New Hope and all of that, the trading cards, the books, the magazines, early on Lucas had um, been talking about them being nine films. And uh, he said the whole thing was going to be called the Journal of the Wills. Uh, for years, I didn't understand what that meant. And then in recently, towards the end of the Clone Wars, there is a, a three-part story that more fully explains this idea of the Jedi retaining their identity after death and why no one's done it before. Um, Qui-Gon Jinn and why Jedi are doing it after and it's a really excellent um, solo adventure of Yoda's and you learn a lot and it really fills in the cracks things I wish maybe they had done a little more in it really demonstrated that the force itself has a will of its own and that it was seeking a balance between the light and the dark. You can't just have one or the other they kind of need to coexist so I wonder I, I suppose Going way out on a limb, I think that will be the overall theme of the new trilogy. So, um, there you go. We will see. Um, the other crazy thing is I expect we'll see a, a, a ghost Obi-Wan Kenobi helping instruct younglings. It would be kind of interesting, actually, if you think about it, seeing like Yoda and, who knows, maybe even Anakin um, interacting to help instruct and get the new order off the ground. Who knows? Uh, now I'm just getting crazy. So there you go. I've committed this insanity to video, despite my better judgment. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, hey, you know, new Star Wars movie. Hey everybody, Adam here. Uh, just want to say thank you for watching my content. You may have noticed there are no ads or pre-rolls on my stuff here on YouTube. That is intentional because all of my content is viewer supported. Folks that like what I do, chip in over there at the Patreon page I have set up. Go ahead and click that logo. It'll take you there, fill you in. And if you feel what I do is a value to you, I'd love to get some value back. As always, thank you for watching.